Alright, hello. Um, and here we go with even more stuff. Right, so I got into looking at this sort of idea that there's a wave um, and uh, so you have a you have this ten year tribulation pit with nine and a half if it's nine and a half and it's so the full wave is nineteen years. Now that is a moon cycle. Uh haven't quite worked out why it's nineteen years, but something about every nineteen years it sort of repeats the same pattern. But interestingly enough Considering, you know, that these dates like 2014 and 1995 and 1996 and that came out, they are actually multiples of 19. So 19 divides into 2014 exactly 106 times, I believe. Um, yeah, and then 108 is 2052. 105 times 19 is 1995. So we go right back to year zero, interestingly enough. But, so what I decided to do was, okay, I thought, because on my other date line I'd started at 1919. So I've, I've, I've gone back... 1919, I kept going back to there, and then I did another sheet, <laughs> going back to there, and I did another sheet, <laughs> right? I mean, there's only so much history you can get. But basically, having gone back to 998, um, major events are hitting these dates. Um, and, you know, some of them do miss slightly and there are inventions and stuff that you could say, well, they invented this in 1896, you know. When did it actually start to have an impact on the world? That might have been five years later. So there's all sorts of stuff like that. But there are some major events which stand out. Uh, that, you know, just hit right in the times Let's see if I can find an example so I'm looking through the camera well uh, Napoleon Napoleon made Emperor 1804 and here we've got a down trough where it is uh, right on that date 1805 and then the Battle of Trafalgar is actually 1805. Um, you know, which is, is, is quite remarkable, really. And so what I did is I was going, using a thing and typing in the date. And then for the, for the top curves, obviously bad news is usually more common. So what I've done here is, so in the up wave... In the up wave, that's the, supposed to be the good time, so I've written in the good time. And then in the down wave, I've written in the bad thing. And obviously it's, it's not always so easy to tell whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, you know. If someone becoming king of somewhere it could be a good thing or a bad thing, couldn't it? It all depends. You have to sort of, you'd have to really get into the history and everything. So, you know, you could, so, where's something 
Dick Turpin executed, you know, was that a good thing or a bad thing? English and Dutch fighting French. Quaker William Penny founds Pennsylvania. But, like, the, the big thing, Oliver Cromwell becomes Lord and Protector. 1653, you know, that... There's so many of them hitting the dates that it can't be ignored. And then we get to this page here. Older stuff. Guy Fawkes. I mean, that's on a that's on a good one. Guy Fawkes gunpowder plot. So, like I say, it's sort of. Can you say? And, you know, I'm not sure how big this war was, but it was a, a busy time. But there, we have the Spanish Armada. Destroyed. But that was on a good time. And I've noticed here, when Scotland wants independence, it's on a good time. When England want to fight France, it's on a good time. But sort of when it's the other way around, then it's on a bad time. When, when Scotland are trying to mess with England, it's on a bad time. When England are trying to conquer the Scots, it's sort of on a bad time, I think. Uh, see Mary, Queen of Scots, abdicates. On a good time. Queen Elizabeth sits on the throne on a bad time. Now, we get to a big one in a minute. 1492, that was a big year. End of Moorish rule in Spain. That's the completion of the Reconquista. Columbus discovers America. And there seems some quiet times and there seems some high times. So I was thinking, is there a bigger wave going on and I haven't been able to get anything to fit in a sort of like oh every seven or every nine that's the one there look right smack bang on and I just can't ignore that I just can't ignore that that Surely that is an event that cannot be ignored. I mean, if anything, if anything is the first trumpet, then surely it must be that. I mean, can it just be ignored, the Great Plague? Really? I don't think it can. See, Scots independence on a good time. And also, they, they mention treaties, and treaties are usually in a bad time, but unions in a good time. And that's like, let's have a quick look at the older one as well. So. Sorry if it's too moon to felt like Magna Carta was on a bad time. But it's like most of the ma amazing sort of historical events are hit in these dates. I mean, there are some, obviously, some that aren't and some that are close. For example, let's go to. You know, there's a big obvious one, isn't there, here? Like. I mean, 1066. I mean, it's within the window, I suppose. So that is actually, that would, I think that would count. Um, but yeah, the start of the Crusades 
isn't really. I mean, I suppose ten, ten ninety nine would have been within this window. So I didn't write it down. But um, I mean, there's just it's hard to put the whole of history on a few pages, isn't it? Five Monks, Canterbury, reports something exploding on the moon shortly after sunset. <laughs> Everyone just thinks, what are they smoking? See, Battle of Horns. So, so remember on the top dates, that's a January, so uh, I was checking sort of l l latter parts of the previous year as well. But also when I went through afterwards... For example, that one, um, major historical events that stood out, I, I wrote in. And there aren't that many that aren't within these dates. Right, so, if... That Great Plague was the first trumpet, and it's... Partly because of the uh, the grievous sore on men with the mark. Now I don't know if that's supposed to be mark of the beast or just you know marked to die or something because the mark of the beast wasn't out at that point. <laughs> or I don't know. Um, and I haven't sort of worked out how that fits all into the sort of, you know, the first trumpet, first seal and everything else apart from that grievous sore, men with the mark, hell, fire and blood and white horse to conquer, you know, not in the first church, uh, try hard, but I just think it's an event and the fact that it hit on these cycles was interesting so so I couldn't I sort of, sort of did try you know every five or every seven but they didn't they seem to you see you seem to have these quiet periods where there's not much going on and zip and there was nothing well obviously and after the plague <laughs> it was a bit quiet because uh, uh, you know there weren't many people I guess but I get, you, you get more of an idea when you're searching on the internet because some years you put in there's just loads of stuff and some years you put in there's hardly anything. You know, I've always tried to write a couple of things down. So anyway, I thought, okay, maybe it's not a set, maybe it's not a fixed pattern. Things, in a sense, would tend to be accelerating. What about prime numbers? The thing is, if you start, if I start from here and count 11, then we run out before we get to the present day. So it can't be that. If I count 13, start with 13, I like that number. Then we find the second trumpet is 1596. Now, we have just had the Spanish Armada destroyed and the war is still going on and this is I believe and I don't know because I should check but mainly a sea war whereas World War Two was all of them uh, so it's a third of the sea and ships dead great burning cast into the sea it's all about the sea Blood of a dead man, all died in sea, vile on the sea. Money, poor, false juice, and going to say in tribulation, ten days. You know, those things, not sure why that would be the uh, when the lamb was marked and opened the seals and that. But anyway, was, <laughs> I'm getting there, I'm getting there. So I'm thinking at this stage, well, yeah, maybe, okay, so the next prime number is 11. And then when we count 11, 
boom, lands on Napoleon. I mean, Napoleon, he doesn't seem to be around that long, but he's certainly significant, and he's in Nostradamus. And it really does feel like it fits this great star fell, burning as a lamp. Worm. I mean, what they did to the land, and it was on the rivers and the springs, it was mainly a war on the land, wasn't it, with him and his horses. Black horse, he used to be a, on a black horse, didn't he? And even this bit, for some reason, chasing the woman and woman around and stuff. There's something about it. Now... Pergamos, good except some like Nicolaitings. In the white stone given, a new name written. And when I, you know, I've already said I haven't got a clue what that is, but look at this. What's happening around that third trumpet? In 1799, the Rosetta Stone found. Now that's the only place where there's any mention of anything to do with the stone unless it's in a some place name ending in stone but that didn't fit in the white stone given a new name written so I mean the Rosetta Stone is about the languages isn't it it's got the translation so it's giving them a new language so it could like mean it like that, or they could, or it could be called the white stone, and um, they gave it a new name, the Rosetta Stone. I don't think it is white. Let's have a quick look here. I can't use my phone while I'm. Is that a stone? I spell it wrong. No. no it's certainly not white. Well, I don't know. Not white. It might have been white. Once upon a time. Anyway. I do think that that landing, so that's number three, that landing right there with Napoleon is more than a coincidence, and then I carried on. So I'll, I'll count, should we count together? Just so you know I'm not bullshitting. So there is the plague one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Second trumpet, right? One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right. So the next one, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there is it. It's our man Hitler, nineteen thirty-eight. Fourth trumpet. <clears throat> Pale horse. Death followed by hell, quarter of earth kill with sword, hunger, earth and beasts. Well, they definitely did kill a lot. Third part of the sun, moon and stars darkened. There was pollution then. Vile on the sun, power to scorch men and they blaspheme, repented not. Good, except they suffered Jezebel will be given power in the morning star. I haven't worked out anything about that yet. First and second bees, not really sure about that yet. Because, you know, I was pretty at this point, well, at the point when I landed on Napoleon, I was pretty sort of like, that's, you know, this is obviously meaningful. Um, 
and then hitting that one. And then where do we go next? Well, five from there. So, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> so we're into the future. So what does the future hold for us? Not good, except a few who will walk with him in white. Well, yeah, at the moment, there does seem to be just a few, to be honest. A vial would be poured out on the seat of the beast. Filled kingdom with darkness, they gnawed but repented not. Star fell, key of bottomless pit, Apollyon smoke, locust, five months torment, except those with God's seal. Vindication, question mark. Wait a little longer. White robes given to the faithful. But this is the comforting part, I think. And if that's where we are, Zion and the Lamb and the one four four thousand. So, <clears throat> that's, as, that's as far as I've got at the moment. I'm thinking, what? So the next one would be three more steps. That's another 70 years away. And then the next one would be two more steps. And that would be the seven. So that's pretty drawn out, a lot more drawn out than I thought. So I'm... Um, I'm going to take a day off, I think, and nice little think about it. No rush at all. Anyway, ciao.